Indianapolis is the mecca for these Ford and Poppy screamers. However, we feel, and have for several years now, that some of the shorter tracks on the USAC circuit stage far more thrills and action per lap than the big Memorial Day Classic. And such was the case at the last big go in Phoenix. The Bobby Ball Memorial drew a capacity crowd, as well as the biggest names in racing. It also represented one of the final appearances of the awesome turbine car. known as the Bobby Ball Memorial, is an annual event on this paved one-mile track located about 15 miles out of Phoenix, Arizona. It's a popular track, and promoter Agajanian draws large crowds both in the stands and on the surrounding hillsides. This is a driver's track, wide enough to provide several grooves, which make for lots of passing and a ton of action. As the 24 starters are prepared, the tension builds. The pace car leads these sleek four-wheeled bullets around the oval as they form up in 12 rows, two cars per row. The cars are starting in the order of their qualifying speeds with the fastest in the front. The turbine car is on the pole with Art Pollard aboard. Mario Andretti sits alongside. In the second row, it's A.J. Foyt and Jim Malloy. The Unser brothers are back in the third row, Bobby and Al side by side. Either Andretti or Bobby Unser could wrap up the year's championship by winning this event. are up tight now as they come down for the green flag and they're off! Art Pollard blasts the turbine car off the pole spot and moves out in front with Mario Andretti right behind him. Closer look now as they enter turn three. It's Pollard, Andretti, Foyt, Malloy, Al Unser, Bobby Unser, and McCluskey. That turbine sounds like a jet screamer as Pollard lashes down the front chute. Andretti comes up to close on the turbine in turn two. Foyt is right on Mario's back, and the rest of the field jockeys hard for position, but the lead still belongs to Pollard. Pollard finds the groove, kicks that turbine car, and stretches his lead over Andretti and Foyt. Number 67, Jim Malloy, goes too wide through the turn and almost loses it. That'll cost him several positions. gets a wheel on the inside of Foyt. It's a side-by-side -side wheel rubber, but A.J. saves him off and fires that coyote down the front chute. Uh-oh, Foyt blew his engine. His car locks up and crashes into Andretti. McCluskey gets out of shape, too, and spins into the infield. It looks like they're all right, but Foyt's car goes into flame. Andretti is okay and walks back to the pits. He wants another ride. He'll probably go into number 16, driven by George Snyder. With the caution flag out, the pace car eases the rest of the field around the oval. Pollard is in the front. Al Unser is second. Lloyd Ruby has the third spot. Then it's Bobby Unser, John Cock, and Larry Dixon. The pack moves through the third turn now, still running under the yellow. And 
Andretti has decided to wait for Snyder to make his first scheduled pit stop before changing over. All cars revving them up now as they come through the fourth turn for the restart. The green is out, and they're off. Suddenly, there's another accident back in the pack. Malloy goes out of control, and Bud Tinglestad in car number 10 flies over him and down toward the infield. Both drivers are okay as Malloy walks back up to the pits, but his car is crunched up against the wall and burst into flames right after Jim got out. Now his car, minus two wheels, is lifted off the fence and towed away. The race was stopped for 45 minutes to clean up the turn. On the second start, the turbine car is first. Al Unser second, then Lloyd Ruby, and Larry Dixon have moved into the fourth position, ahead of Bettenhausen and John Cock. Now Al Unser starts to make his bid and closes on Pollard. Knepper in car number 24 cramped it a little too hard coming through the corner, lost it, and spun her all the way around. Arnie is all right, but the wrecker tows the car back to the pits and out of the race. Pollard still holds the front spot with Al Unser and Ruby right behind him as the pace car leads the field around for the restart. There's the green flag and they're off again. Al Unser is determined to catch that turbine this time and he pours it on. stand straight. He's got a wheel up on Pollard, and he does it! Al Unser takes the lead. That puts the turbine in the second spot with Lloyd Ruby third. turn, Pollard's hand goes up. He's pulling into the pits. The turbine is out of the race on the 47th lap. There goes another one. Bobby Unser blows that turbo off the all the way down the back chute. That puts another top contender out. shoot. Gordon Johncock moves into second behind Al Unser. Lloyd Ruby is still pacing himself well back in the third spot. Through the third turn, Al Unser moves into some heavy traffic. He passes one car on the outside, then slashes down low to take two more on the inside as they fly onto the front chute. Gary Bettenhausen driving the blue number 11 slides up into third down that main straightaway. Roger McCluskey in number eight has done a tremendous job in unlapping himself after that accident with Boyd and Andretti early in the race. Roger has that off, he wound out all the way as he moves up to run with Ruby. Here's a bad break for the leader. Al Unser is slowing down. His arm is raised, signifying that he's going into the pits and out of the race. McCluskey could be the boy to watch now. He's on the move and passes John Cock. Ruby is running just in front of Bettenhausen. And that's all she wrote for Roger McCluskey. His hand is up and he's out of it on the 145th lap. Ruby and Bettenhausen are still battling it out for the number one spot. And now, number 16, Mario Andretti, who swapped with George Snyder earlier in the race, has moved up to third. And finally, Lloyd Ruby, driving the Gene White Special, makes his first pit stop of the day. Everybody was wondering just how long he could hold out. His stop is a quick one, and Lloyd screams back onto the track, but he's second now. As they pound down for the flag, it's Bettenhausen, Ruby, and Andretti. And here he is out of the fourth pocket and down the front chute for the checkered flag, Gary Bettenhausen. He wins the hard-fought Bobby Ball Memorial. It's Gary's first win in a championship car in his first year on the championship trail.